Hello everyone, here with me today is a person with a wealthy 18-year experience in the cybersecurity landscape. I present to you, Muto Kumar Natarajan, the Director for XDR Business at Trend Micro. Hello Muto, can you briefly explain about yourself before we even begin the interview? Fantastic, so about myself, uh, my name is Muto Kumar Natarajan, people call me Muto. Uh, I'm based out of Singapore. And I've been working in cybersecurity industry for the last 20 years, and I've uh, conducted different roles in the past life, uh, right from consulting, cybersecurity architecting, um, the sales engineers part of it. Uh, and, and now I'm actually leading the XDR businesses for Southeast Asia for Trend Micro. Uh, so that's, that's about me. Thank you so, so much, Mutu, for the introduction. Now that we have broken the ice, let us delve into the first ever question, shall we? So, Mutu. With the current threat landscape and also the economic situation that we are currently experiencing right now, how can organizations defend against these dynamic threats? Fantastic question, Kairo. As we see here, right, the enterprise, a lot of enterprise lost its centralized visibility and control, which they used to have it before, due to a quick transition into digital transformation. And we could say it's COVID through get transition. Um, just to retain the existing customer market or to just to find a new marketplace with the new dynamic that we have today. So which also means the enterprises have to adapt connected devices, uh, work from home users, adjust to their requirements and also move the data to the cloud services so that they can reach out to the customer in a better fashion. So that means uh, a lot of data has been moved, a lot of adjustment has been made to a typical enterprises. Uh, cloud services and uh, work from home users and so on and so forth, a lot of connected devices, which also expose enterprises to the larger large scale. On the other hand, if you look at the attacker perspective, the attackers are more sophisticated uh, and they're even using uh, leveraging AI and automated tools to target enterprises to launch against an attack in terms of ransomware, malware, and phishing and so on and so forth. Now, in this situation, so what are the key things that the organization want to really different against to say, first, first I want to start off with say, I want to quickly identify my digital assets that I move to the, you know, due to digital transformation, how much risk exposure they have. Are there any priorities I need to look into? And, and perform a continuous validation because now your digital assets are across clouds and users and devices and so on and so forth. And if you look at the statistics, uh, in last year, 82% of the breach Identity theft is part of it. So how the user identity, because now you have a lot of work from home users, the high chances they may identity, your account may be taken over. How can I actually track them? So continuous validation of digital assets, user identity is required and to prioritize. And also, as the attackers are leveraging artificial intelligence and automations and for defending perspective and protect against such attack, enterprises really have to move into uh, automatic protection, automatic protection, automation of uh, uh, threat reduction and response and applying playbooks as part of it to keep up with the latest attack technique. At the same time, leveraging AI and behavior analytics as part of the tools and techniques to defend against this attack. But when, when we see the three different contexts, the current situations, the attacker perspective, what are the tools and techniques that's required to handle it? From the budget perspective, you're not going to get an unlimited budget with the current economic situation. We can't just keep adding some more cybersecurity tools. So it has to be cost effective. So the organization have to adapt to a strategy from the current landscape, current situation, moving from just adding multiple silo tools towards a consolidated platform where they can expand the security services and features based on the demand and the maturity of digital transformation. So that's the current approach or strategy that the enterprises can take. I see. So you mentioned earlier, Mutu, that the attackers are leveraging the usage of AI and automation to take their threats a step ahead. So now, how can Trend Micro's XDR or the platform-based approach help in making sure that the customers are better protected? Uh, fantastic, great question. So we can we have talked about earlier response. We talked about customers have to shift from the tools-based approach into the platform-based approach. So now I'm going to break them into uh, multiple pieces. I'm going to say why we have to move to platform-based approach. Then we see how we, we Trend Micro XDR and platform-based approach is going to help. In the first place, we looked at, say, hey, I want to look at, uh, I have a lot of users working from home, and I want to really know is the identity or compromise, and that's, is there anything else that's going on? So I need to really continue to validate user identity compromise if it is happening. If it is happening, I want to get this prioritized. 
I may have a lot of digital assets moved into clouds. Uh, I may have any public facing service and I want to see what are the risks that's there. So quantifying risk, identifying the risk score for my enterprise is very important. The technology that addressed this is actually an external attack surface management today, which they helped them to really uh, handle this use case. And identity threat detection and response. If you look at it, there's two different technologies, right? On top of this, uh, if, if, if it has happened, if that really happens, uh, how quickly can I really proactively identify those breaches in terms of identity, in terms of threats, in terms of attack, and how quickly can you respond to it? While we say uh, detection is very important, at the same time, automation comes into play. So XDR really addresses use cases. Now, the user risk as well as the threats are dynamic. So that means today, for example, I'm connecting from home. Uh, the, my, my risk score for today would be completely different from tomorrow. Maybe today my identity is all good and I'm able to connect to the internet and be able to connect to the VPN and I can access corporate resources. Overnight, if my identity is compromised, my endpoint is compromised, the risk score will adjust accordingly. And then I want to really readjust to say, what kind of resources do I need to get access? Maybe I think it would place me to a quarantine zone to make sure my issues are fixed before they connect it back. And then putting all these use cases into automation and playbooks. Now, if you look at this, five different solutions we talked about. Excellent attack surface management. Identity detection response, XDR, zero trust, automation and playbook. So this will actually beef up or let's say develop the customer efficiency in handling and fund threats. But if customers goes towards a siloed approach, a technology that is working in a separate siloed fashion, this will actually complicate the whole operations and increase the capital investment as well as the operation costs as well. With Trend Micro XDR and platform-based approach, we pre-integrated all these functions and use cases into a single platform. It's offered within the platform so customer can turn on based on the usage factors and so on. So, so the other benefits of this technology, now you have in continuous validation, external attack surface management that's going on that could tell you proactively identify these are your vulnerabilities, these are your risk exposure, these are your risk score. Maybe you're not exploited yet, but these are your risk exposure to the internet. Now you can actually proactively use that and apply if you integrate your attack surface management, proactive risk prioritization with XDR, you can proactively respond to that by, by this integration information coming from the excellent attacks of this. And let's say if your zero trust is applying a siloed, if it is integrated with the XDR attacks of this management, you can actually say the risk score of the user, the use case I explained before, has been changed in the last 24 hours. Make sure this user, as we apply zero trust, make sure based on the risk score, this user move into a containment and isolation zone for escalation. And this whole process can be automated if all these technology are pre-integrated and offered in the platform. Today, as of today, we have customers who are using Trend Micro Vision on the platform and able to achieve these use cases in more automated fashion. Hope that helps to identify this, uh, helps to answer this question. Uh, a long answer, but it's a detailed use cases and I'm putting them together for you. No, 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 Mutu. It is totally fine. Detailed questions requires detailed answers. Now, as we all know, threats are ever-evolving and working from home or working from anywhere practice seems to accelerate the process. Hence, it is now or never for organizations to quickly adopt XDR. Hence, in your opinion, Mutu, how can organizations simplify and quickly operationalize XDR and how can Trend Micro help? Great question, Tyro. So Adapt of new technology, like for example, when we say XDR, we're looking at a uh, few few different type of XDR. So there are many XDR functions and features in the market. Yeah. So when we say XDR, the earlier traditional method we used to do is we try to go by detection locks, by firewalls and IPAs and try to make sense of it. When we say XDR, we're talking about combination of multiple detection response tools working together. For example, most of the attack happens with an endpoint, an email. For example, most of the transaction happens here. An attack would start from email. Based on our research, 82% of attack is starting from email in terms of phishing campaigns. And then that targets endpoint. And then they can potentially move into network and club. With an XDR approach, we connect all these dots together, cross correlation, bring the visibility and control back to the organization. What's happening to endpoint network and cloud workflow? What are the threats that's been prevented by your prevention layer? What have been missed? And what kind of follow up action you can do with this automation playbook? So that's the visibility that will bring it across for many organization. In this case, when you're talking XDR, you technically 
placing a CCTV camera in different layers, right? So that's the amount of volume of data collecting, consolidating, gaining the visibility back and providing you the control back to the organization. So putting the organization back into the driver's seat to take the control of that. Now, coming into the simplification, now, if I say XDR of four different layers able to manage from a single location, able to identify threats in a, in a single location, automate that workflow from, from, a, from a same XDR console, it simplifies your whole operation process. Now, if I able to leverage data feed from external attack surface management, as we discussed before, say you don't, you're not attacked yet, but you have 10 digital resources that is actually kind of open to this vulnerability attack. And if you don't fix them, you're going to have uh, a major breach. And if I can take, take that feed because of pre-integration with XDR and the, in the platform with an ASRM, I can take the feeds and, uh, and apply an a XDR playbook. And let's say in the event, after applying the XDR framework, if the risk score change for the user, I can bring in a zero trust combination that is integrated, that goes forward and say, I can move the user privilege from restricted to back to the normal operations and so on. And the automation process goes. So it's not only platform consolidation, workflow consolidation, analysis consol consolidation, and use case consolidation. And that's how we simplify this operation. So on top of this, uh, let's say, if, if you have a SOC analyst, because we are talking about platform security and so on and so forth. So who's behind the driver's seat makes a bigger sense. The biggest challenge for many of the SOC analysts to decipher some of the sophisticated attack that they see in this console. So we have added uh, an AI tool, we call this companion AI tool, that helps to decode some of these uh, attack scripts, attack types that is found in the deduction and to say with a, with a simple English language. So the, the analyst can go ahead and say, explain me what is this attack does. I see this is suspicious. Or even if they want to proactively able to hunt for a specific attack, they can actually ask the AI tool and say, I want to find this information, provide this information. But we have added the AI tool on top of this to simplify this operation station process. So of course, we also added training and use cases, skill transfers as part of it uh, for our customers. So in a nutshell, this is how we simplify the integrations, workflows, people and process for the organization with XDR and Unified Platform. Now that we have covered and talked about how can we operationalize XDR simply and quickly, it does mean that we need workers to also keep up the pace. So Mutu, as I mentioned earlier, as technologies evolve rapidly, adaptation can be quite challenging. Thus, we would like to know how can Trend Micro help to address this skill sets gap? Great question, Cairo. So this is a journey, right? So at first, when we walk into a customer, we educate them the priorities of the tax that's going on. And otherwise, some customers are well informed. They say, these are my problem statement. And from identifying the problem statement, we move into the solution part of it. And we move into what kind of technology can be applied, be it XDR, ASRM, or Zero Trust to solve their business challenges. And adoption of technology, this is a sequential process there. So when it comes to operations, when it comes to effectively using these technologies, right? Because uh, the skill set gap has a huge, if you look at the global scale in terms of workspace uh, gap, there's about 3.4 million people uh, requirement to handle the cyber security, to fill the cyber security job across the globe. And we do see this in many customers. Uh, we don't have any skilled, rightly skilled SOC analyst to handle such such uh, technologies to make them effectively used. In many situations, if there are attacks, uh, uh, sophisticated attack, there's always a science and indicators. If they're not picked up at the right spot in the right time, they may miss them. Just we call this false negative, right? So to address the use cases, uh, of course, the platform really comes into play. But how about the people and the process? So Trend Micro offers a 24 by 7 uh, version 1 socket services, or we call as MXDR services, that helps to address this gap uh, by offering monitoring uh, the customer endpoints, network, email, cloud workload, telemetries coming from XDR, and, and also providing them an, an consultative approach of threads, order recommendation to take actions and so on and so forth. In natural, they can leverage on micro MXDR services or SOC as a service, vision on SOC as a service, that is as an extended SOC for the organization. So that, that way, we help, we help customers to address the skill set gap and help them, give them time to catch up with the latest technology and process and, and procedures. Thank you, Mutu, for your insights in addressing the issue regarding skill sets gap. Now, on to our final question for today. A vital one, I would say. Me and the viewers out there would like to know on what are some of the key takeaways that organizations should consider when evaluating XDR as well as outsourced SOC services. Excellent question, Cairo. Uh, so there are many aspects to it. Uh, 
because if you look at XDR, AI, uh, you know, centralized intelligence, SOC, everybody joined this bandwagon because it's the trend, it's the, it's the demand and so on and so forth. The customer has to carefully evaluate the maturity of the XDR technology because not every XDR technology built to address your pain points, your priorities and so on and so forth. For example, first Trend Micro XDR customer, I, I'm the one who architected in APAC. Uh, that's again five years ago. When people were talking about EDR, we were actually talking about XDR as a strategy for the customers and we have them deployed. And, and the technology matured and evolved since then. So if anyone there is just talking about XDR coming to you and say, here's an XDR approach taken and apply, carefully evaluate how mature is that and how it's actually addressing your use cases and outcomes that you want to achieve. And, and not starting with stopping with an XDR and going towards vendor consolidation today, you may hear information from Gartner about cyber mess architecture that's going to be effective uh, for organization to really help to drive that vendor consolidation process, integration process to make the security more efficient. So you may want to have this data points in your consideration, how the technology is going to help you consolidate solution, consolidate use cases, consolidate in a platform based architecture. For example, if you want to extend make your XDR more proactive, the best approach is to integrate with an attack surface management, which proactively tell you these are problems there, you need to be fixed. And if that vendor really help you to address these use cases. And if you want to adapt zero trust, there are many things around, many use cases are zero trust, but the inputs from the attack surface management and XDR is very important to make the zero trust more effective. So do does this solution help you to integrate all three vectors in a single platform? Have them on the checklist so that it really helps you to say, in terms of technological space, use case space, are you achieving this outcome? Coming to the MSSP, uh, this is a bigger, bigger picture. Uh, because, of course, if you say outsource MSSP, SOC as a services, um, you know, it depends on organization because your business priorities and the set values and your response time may not exactly mean map to the MSSP values as well. So make sure your SLOs are really checked and you have a proper SLOs discussion agreements are made. But the common pitfall you have in the market you see, because the technology evolves so fast and there is a skill set gap, this also apply to the MSSP vendor or the outsource SOC vendor. And they don't they don't have an unlimited skill set to be used, right? Many typically the traditional MSSP vendors are very good in terms of monitoring uh, detection logs. Means something goes wrong, I find viruses from firewalls, IPS, endpoints, I'm gonna update you. But when you move into XDR, which is today's demand and ASRM, these are telemetries, meaning to say uh, what happens before the attack, what happens during the attack, what happens after the attack. That's complete recording of a CCTV recording, which requires infrastructure, skill set to analyze and respond you back. So make sure that you, if you're having Vision One Soccer services or even Soccer services, the MSSP has the skill set and experience and access to the platform to offer you and manage XDR services, plus able to adapt to new technology demand like ASRM and Zero Trust bringing into the portfolio to offer a comprehensive offering to you. And finally, the KPI. So how are you going to measure your output on your MSSP and SOC as a services? So you may want to measure what happens before now. After you subscribe to the services, are you able to identify the threats faster and respond to the threat faster before the service supplies? By the way, in our Vision 1 SOC as a services, these are the measurable KPIs we show to the customers. Hey, uh, we, and we have an SLO, so we say these are the critical problems before you had, you took two to three weeks to really find and contain it. But I'm able to help you detect it within 60 minutes. That's the KPN effectiveness we can show to the customer when they're really on board with us on Vision and Hope that it helped you. Thank you so much, Mutu, for your time. So folks, it is clear that cybersecurity is an ever-evolving field that requires continuous adaptation and innovation. As we wrap up this insightful interview with Mutu Kumar Natarajan, the Director for XDR Business at Trend Micro, we have explored the significance of XDR and Trend Micro's role in enhancing security. Thank you for joining us and stay vigilant in the world of security. Thank you.